their stance on Brexit. We needed to get out of the European Union. But what we're beginning to see is that something far darker was helping to move that that was not in the best interests of Britain. So this was a wiring diagram. And here we can see central Cambridge Analytica, but also aggregate IQ, linking in also organisations like Veterans for Britain and uh, big names in America, such as Donald Trump and his uh, campaign group itself. Um, but uh, let's just put in a little bit of text here. I apologise it's small. I'll read a little bit. It said there's an even bigger player in this industry. There's Sophie Schmidt, advised CSL head Alexander Nix, to check out the work of US data intelligence agency Palantir Technologies. Schmidt, the daughter of Google chairman Eric Schmidt, used to work for SEL Elections, which was later renamed Cambridge Analytica. So we've got some very interesting connections here. Palantir is chaired by billionaire and PayPal founder Peter Thiel, who was also a board member and a major investor of Facebook. Earlier this year, Thiel joined Trump's transition team. Apparently, Palantir has contracts to handle vast data sets from UK citizens for British spy agency GCHQ, as well as US citizens for the NSA. In addition, Palantir has developed an aid of the spyware X Keyscore program used by NSA and its spy vice partners, and subsequently expanded by whistleblower Edward Snowden. Such spyware could be useful for garnering consumer data, including, no doubt, voter lifestyle preferences. And I'll just add this as one other comment from another excellent article. I encourage people to go back and read it. Um, Democracy Questions, New York University Associate Professor Tamsin Shaw sums up the application of voter behavior technologies. That, quote, this is military funded technology that's been harnessed by a global plutocracy and has been used to sway election in ways that people can't even see, don't even realize is happening to them. It's about exploiting an existing phenomenon like nationalism and then using it to manipulate people at the margins. And the reason I'm putting this up on screen, Mike, is because we, we are now uh, back where we know that the British government is using the COVID crisis to unleash applied behavioral science on the public. We've seen inside the SAGE report that uh, they want to ramp up fear of the virus in order to get their policy through. And now we're casually saying we've extended from 21 days to 28 days, locking people in their homes. But what have we got behind this? Uh, massive software to um, record everything we're thinking and, and saying. So let's just uh, put one more quote from the Canary, but I've used that excellent image from True Publica. And this is from Cummings himself. He says, changing the course of European history via the referendum only involved about 10 crucial people controlling, um, and these, these um, figures are his figures, 10 to the 7, while its effects over 10 years could be on the scale of 10 to the 8, 10 to the 9 people, and 10 to the 12 um, pounds. So 10 people controlling a vast social economic change by means of all this uh, military um, data collection that we're seeing, including uh, Pantia, who, which is working with GCHQ. I'll end here because one of the key people who've been really digging into Cummings came up with this as just a little forecast of what they think it was has been going on. The first stage was for this power group to take control in the UK, to take back control in order to steer the UK. The second stage was to get Brexit done to their satisfaction, not to the satisfaction of the public. The third stage was to get in Maven and ARPA, which uh, you've talked about, so we're into the data collection. And they are saying that uh, Cummings wants to get this, uh, this accomplished by the 1st of January next year. And the delay in uh, releasing us from lockdown is that all this can go on in the quiet. So the key agendas are the use of applied psychology, including these three word, three word phrase, uh, phrases. Um, they're using game theory 
they are very keen on heading into genetic engineering and moving on to social school credits. Um, so this person is saying we've got six months to stop what's happening before it's complete. Cummings will move on and Boris will be replaced by Gove. That's just the opinion of one person, but we've got some very interesting stuff happening. And um, a little bit of a hot subject um, uh, for you, Alex, but if I can just say to you, it is unprecedented that we are now using uh, the intelligence services to come right into the heart of society to hoover up data, whether it's in the NHS or from the average person via their phones. And none of this is being debated or de in Parliament or declared to the British people. This is very sinister. Parliament is the link word between what Carol Cadwallader has brought out and what you have put on screen after that. Because Parliament is the only means we have constitutionally of determining the good people's will. Now, if you have looped that out of the quest of the question, removed it from the equation, as it seems Mr. Cummings is very keen to do, then you have obviated another of the three word slogans that we have, one that he really hates, which is kick them out. In fact, Winston Churchill, if I can use a slightly a, a mild expletive for the lunchtime news that Churchill uh, actually put in his own papers and speeches. He said the benefit of democracy is that if all else fails, you can kick the buggers out. Now, if you don't have elected members of parliament in the control and questioning arrangements for all that you've set out, then all of this apparatus can go on from government onto government, can't it? That's the, that collection of people that I experienced when I was at GCHQ can behave as a supranational blob, the Anglo-American Five Eyes Alliance, hoovering up the data, learning to control it and socially, socially analyze it in ever cleverer ways, as I saw between the, you know, the beginning of the millennium and when I left in 2009, great changes. But the final piece of the jigsaw is, of course, this is corporate intelligence. So I've always emphasized in speeches on this subject, subject the really Gucci technology. Okay, the, the seed capital comes from us, the Muggins taxpayer. But it, when it's given through GCHQ and NSA and other bodies to the private sector, then the private sector comes up with the intellectual property, particularly the really sharp stuff that actually works. And then as a kind of dregs, the intelligence agencies get it back under nominal national control. What's the national control? It is the parliamentarians. There's no other form of, of effective national control or popular scrutiny of what's going on. So remove the parliamentarians from the equation and you have got fascism. Uh, Alex, uh, we were 